Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of the Gamecast Newscast. I am Snowy, otherwise known as Count Fracula. Joining me today is Sully. Hello. Good to be back. This is like my third time on. Yes, it is. So... Oh, no, I'm on a bit of a roll. I missed like the first 20, but I'm on a roll now. <laughs> I think you missed the first 30. We're 30? Like, okay, I fuck. think this is episode 38. <laughs> I'm a late bloomer. Yeah. yeah. Max is still not with us. He is a... Very busy man at the moment. He is, uh, I think he's moving soon, like very soon. Right now, I believe. Oh, okay. Anyway. Yeah, so his, he won't be here for this one, and he probably won't be here for next week either. Hopefully the week after, but I can't promise it. But However, hey. a small plug. I oh. did manage to get him for Pocket Edition. <gasps> I got him. I got him. <laughs> and we God. covered Cyberpunk 2077, so make sure you guys oh. come and check that one out. Because he was in the behind closed doors demo, and he pretty much broke it all down. It was great. I am Brilliant. hyped. I am really looking yeah. forward to listening to that, actually. <laughs> yeah, it was really good, actually. So the message of the Discord was like, oh, you It's bastard. a 40-minute <laughs> chat, and he Fuck. just he had a lot to share, so it was really good. Okay. So I'm keen. Well. A couple of days, I reckon. It'll pop up, that good. one. Good, 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 good. Look forward to that. And otherwise, let's get on with the show then. So, Sully, what have you been playing this week? <coughs> Jesus, um, I have been playing Fallout Shelter, actually. A little uh, mobile yeah. game that recently came to Switch. Um, yeah, I'm done with it, I think. <laughs> <coughs> that sounds about right. It's quite, it's quite enjoyable. It's very, very enjoyable. Um, for those of you that don't know, it's kind of like this... 2D base buildings kind of sim game. Um, it's very mobile esque. It's just been ported to the Switch. Um, it's fun, right? Yeah, the idea of the game is to try to lure new kind of dwellers into your vault and have them be productive in your vault and to ex- basically just flesh out your vault. Um, but I've hit this kind of point where I just seem to be sitting there with nothing to do, absolutely nothing to do except collect resources. Um, and yeah, that's literally it. Oh, uh, I is can't it just the sort of, hit, I've, you can't, I've hit a progression wall. Yeah, you um, can't do anything until you get the resources. <sighs> so the only thing you could do is sit there and wait. Yeah, it's not quite that. See, the resources kind of flow in a sense that you need the resources just to keep your your vault kind of operational. right? Yeah. Otherwise, people start getting sad. They start dying. So it's not even a progress, progression thing. It's a survivability thing. Um, the progression thing is all tied to the resources, literally bottle caps that you get for doing certain tasks like, um, you know, your dwellers being happy or, you know, hitting certain milestones, um, getting more dwellers in. But I can't do any of that because it's so slow. The amount of money they give me is not enough to kind of keep ticking along at a you know, a satisfying pace. So I'm just sitting there, just keeping my vault alive while I literally just watch my bottle caps slowly go up so I can build something else to attract more dwellers. Well, and you know what they want you to I'm, do, don't you? <laughs> they want me to buy the lunch boxes. Yeah. <laughs> um, which I'm not doing. It's a fun game, but it's not that fun and I'm not going to fall into the trap of... Once you buy one, man. Once you buy one lunch box, <laughs> that's it. Yeah, you're going to... You know, well, I want five because I've made it this far. Yeah. Um, so I'm just not doing it. So I'm putting it down. I'm done with it. Um. But other than that, that's about it. That's all I've been playing. I am going to pick up Hollow Knight. Um, yes, probably do next that. pay, which is a couple to, of days. I need to actually re-download that on Steam. Yeah, yeah, it'd be really cool. I'm really keen. I've not played it before, so yeah, it's really um, but, good. Oh, I did download it, and I've just lost. Yeah, it. the whole Metroidvania <laughs> style thing. I'm I'm really keen for. So yeah, tell you what, I'm going to see if uh, reinstalling has fixed that the bug I was having with it, where it didn't actually. Oh, uh, nice. Because it just crashed, it kept crashing at launch. So Ooh, let's see if fun. the reinstall helps. Also, I don't think it saved my data to the cloud. I don't. Oh. Please tell me I haven't lost eight hours of progress. Dude, it's... I've got so many different Minecrafts. Like I've just lost yeah. track of where everything is. Oh, it's thank God for that. Like, oh fuck. I've still got my save file. That's all right. <laughs> Lovely. Nice. I'm going to very quickly see if it'll actually load the game. If it does, then I'll quit out and probably play it later. Anyway. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Go, go. Oh, good. Hooray. I have yeah, lost 15, all my progress. I think it's 15 USD on the Switch store at the moment for Switch owners. I, thought I believe it it's was in USD. £15 pounds and $20. Okay. $20. I just Something like just that. Anyway. 15 for Hollow me, Knight so. Switch. 
Let's have a look. Nintendo. And this one, I believe, does come with all the DLC and all the extras, right? It does. I don't believe they actually sold any DLC that I'm aware of. I thought it was just expansions. Yeah, they just get, like, on the PC version, they just had free expansions. Okay, so that's not a big selling point then, but go pick it up. It'd be a cool way to play it, I think. I think it'd be pretty cool, yeah. Oh, yeah, it's uh, £11, so it's $15. Oh, that's not too bad, actually, then. So about $20 for me, then. (laughs) Yeah, I'd say that's worth it. I think it was... Yeah, I think so. I think it was cheaper on Steam. I might be wrong. Yeah, uh, same price if you're not counting the summer sale, so that's actually good, because a lot of games tend to be more expensive on Switch, I've found, for some reason. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, those but digital yeah. stores like Microsoft, Nintendo, and all that kind of stuff, I feel like they gouge you a little bit extra. Yeah. Speaking in comparison of, there's, to Steam. A, there's a new racing game that's come out on PS4. I think it's coming out on PC soon. It's called Onrush. It's made mm. by... Oh, what company is it made by? It's a, a quite a prestigious company. Uh, Platinum Games? Fuck. I'm no. just throwing oh, it's made by there. Codemasters, actually. It's a racing game <laughs> oh, by Codemasters. Okay. It looks really cool. But mm. to buy it new in on the PlayStation like Store is fifty three or fifty five pounds on the PlayStation Jesus. Store. I know that's a lot of money. And to buy it to buy the disc version in store in like in game it's forty five pounds for the disc. So that's a tenner cheaper. And yeah, and then second hand you get it even cheaper again. Right? Exactly and. Currently, Tesco, one of our major <clears throat> supermarkets in the country, is selling the disc for £32. I love that. We get department stores here, like Big W and Target and stuff, um, and they always just undercut EB Games yeah. and all the big retailers. I remember, it's great. Well, Buy a significant amount, like $20 exactly, as well. I remember when God of War came out, that Tesco did the same again. I think they sold it for like £32 mm. for, a, for a couple mm. of weeks. So It's good because they can afford to take a loss on it. So it's just like a loss leader just to get people in. Exactly. Thinking they're going to also buy some bed sheets when in reality I'm just going there for God of War. Yeah. Now, I really like the look of Onrush. It looks like a really good game, but I would not pay £50 for it. That's that's an extortionate amount of money. Oh, dude, you know what I want? I want another, like, really good Burnout Revenge or something. Like another Burnout. I know they... Crash Simulator and stuff. There's Burnout Paradise Remastered. That's come yeah, out. but that's like open world and it didn't have all the crash stuff and all that. Like that was yeah, more like a that's true. That, that was more like a um, Need for Speed esque style yeah. game. Still, yeah, but something like Burnout Three, but yeah, modern. I, yeah. I love yep. Burnout Three. It's such a good game. Uh, Bring back a crazy taxi. <laughs> Do a new crazy taxi. How good would that be? Oh god, I don't know if that would multiplayer. Work. Oh, multiplayer. Oh, the party crazy. games you could have. That yes. Would- Okay. Time Attack with Friends. So good. That would be quite fun. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, what have I been playing this week? I've been playing... I played a bit of Dead Cells because I bought that mm. in the Steam sale. Okay. It is a good game, yes. Ma- Max spent a good few weeks recommending it to me. <laughs> in the Gets a little cast. bit grindy. Gets a yeah, bit grindy. Yeah, I, c- I can see that. But at the same time, really, like, really fun little fun. game. I-, I enjoy the combat. It's really mm. sort of fast, and I, I like a good quick combat when it comes to things like hack and slash. But yeah, it's one it's one of those games as well where you can, like, when I say it's a bit grindy. Once you get the controls in, you don't have to really be paying attention. You just kind of do it in the background. Yeah, just like just kind of start flicking through it because it is a bit kind of grindy because it's permadeath, right? But you get yeah, to, you have to retain sort of... some of your skill trees and stuff like yeah, you, that. Yeah, there's some weapons. skills you retain permanently. You unlock mm. new weapons with the well, with each run, uh, new yeah. new things and whatever, and you can upgrade it so you retain a certain amount of mm-hmm. money from each run as well. Yeah. So yeah, it's yeah. There's definitely good things yeah. to it. Well, I mean, the whole idea of the game is to get a little bit further every time. Exactly. I think I've got the furthest I've got is about halfway through the third section, the ramparts. Oh yeah. That's about as far as I've got through it so far. But yeah, I, I think it's about as far as I got, yeah. Yeah. I'm enjoying it a lot. It's a really fun little game. And I've also started playing Just Cause Three again. Oh damn. Because of number four. Yeah, I think so. It's just made me want to play Just Cause because it's a really good game. Unfortunately, I uninstalled it and it didn't uh, back up my save file, so I've had to uh, restart the story. 
Yeah, I've got no experience with the Just Cause series. Like, it's one series I've never even dabbled my fingers in, even a little bit. I'm going to recommend three to you. Well, I might just wait for four. Mm, There is that, but at the same time, how much is three at the moment on the Steam sale? Oh, if it's pretty cheap. Like, it's just a big, crazy sandbox, right? We can just do crazy shit. It is currently about five Australian dollars or ten Australian dollars for the... uh, one that includes all the expansions. I'm going to recommend the hell out of that for that price. Is... This is an amazing uh, made... game for that price. All right, I'll check it out. But who made it? Was that Avalanche Games that made yes, that? Yes, it is. And they, they're they the guys who are currently doing in Rage conjunction with two. Yeah, Rage. Yes. And they did Mad Max. Yep. Where the fuck are they finding... Where are they finding time to do Just Cause 4? I don't know. <laughs> I'm not going to complain. I've seen the things for Just Cause 4. It looks... Sweet. Yeah, you know he needs to just acquire that studio and just like absorb all of its talent. Rockstar. Mm. Could you imagine what those minds could bring to the GTA sandbox? The problem like, with that that idea is is that they'd then be under the thumb of Take Two, and I don't trust Take Two with anything. Who would be? Uh, just cause Dev. Yeah, because Rockstar's owned by Take Two. Are they? I did not not did not know that. Yeah. Okay. That's right, why a lot of the things in GTA Five, like GTA Online, are particularly shitty. Like the yeah, microtransactions yeah. is because of Take Two. Dude, I mean, we had a recording a little while back about how I think it was like GTA to a point has kind of escaped all this kind of microtransaction stuff. Um, but you know, people got to remember, like they only do one game every five years. So, you know, we could look back at this GTA being like, yeah, it was great. It was mostly microtransaction free. It was just a buy it type experience and be done with it. You know, you get the game, but you know, the next one could be a completely different story. Completely yeah. Different, if they do you know? that, they're gonna, take, Cause it, they're not gonna have fun with it. <laughs> well, it, it's, it's so much time has passed between entries that the industry completely changes. So. Still, <laughs> don't mm. think that would go down very well if they did that. Oh, but no, it absolutely would not. No. But anyway, go and get Just Cause 3 while it's on the Steam sale right. because it's ridiculously cheap. And I'll it's check a it out. really good game. Anyway, uh, that, I think, is all I've been playing this week because I've stopped playing Pokemon Quest because I've also reached a wall in it where it's sort of... Oh, no. It's either you have to wait a few days to get the appropriate things. You have to grind Aww. previous levels, and I'm just like, I'm not feeling that at all. I'd rather just buy it. <coughs> yeah, just I'm not. I'm it. not. Not feeling the the game anymore. And also, it won't mm. let me record footage on the Switch oh. for that game. So, how do you even go about recording Switch footage? Um, so, you know, on the Switch, on the left Joy-Con, there's the button where the home button yeah. is on the other side yeah. uh, that's the button you just take a screen capture if you press it yeah if you hold it it'll then record it'll then save an mp4 of the last 30 seconds of gameplay oh huh. okay so that's how i recorded all my uh rocket league footage on switch so you had to hit that every 30 seconds no i mean you can if you want to do it continuously but Okay. If it, just for, for the purposes segments. of review or just to catch a cool moment, then it's uh-huh. quite useful. But unfortunately, the ability to have that, well, the that features enablement is dependent on a game to game basis. So some games, it'll let you do it like Rocket League. Right. Some games yeah. like Pokemon Quest or the demo for Octopath Traveler, it will not let you do that. Well, I'm not surprised for... um. Uh, the Pokemon game because it's, it's like Nintendo. They hate you sharing and recording. recording oh, but, yeah, but I think it lets you do it with Mario. Does it? Okay. I think so. So I don't know. It just seems a bit odd that I don't know. I, anyway, I'm not a massive fan of Pokemon Quest. Here's here's my review of it. To be perfectly honest, I'll put it oh, right that, here. That's right. <laughs> yeah. We'll for that review, I, I'm, <laughs> I'm not. I'm not going to give it a full review. I'm going to give it a review here. It's okay. There's not a lot of gameplay to it. You like the mo the fun you get out of it is trying to find more Pokemon and add them to your thing, but you can't 
that the actual instances of getting a new Pokemon are so few and far between that it's just you know it's it's tedious. And then you have then you also end up with a situation where you're waiting for resources and you have to keep grinding through previous hmm. levels to get resources to get Pokemon to get to complete the level you're currently on because it's too high a level for you. Hmm. That doesn't sound fun, man. It's, I mean, we kind no. of thought this was going to happen, right? Like, yeah, I mean, I expected it to be less than stellar, but I don't know. I wanted a bit more gameplay in my game than that. You got to put it on the scale, man. Use the scale. What's the review? Where are you putting it? I can't remember the fucking scale. To be perfectly honest, wait. Well, we can't wait for sale. Um, uh, let's put it down as a rent it. Yeah, rent it. <laughs> it's <laughs> free, so. Um. Yeah, I just, you know, it's it's fine for like five minutes of entertainment and then you might as well just put it down. <laughs> yeah, and this is this is coming from a Pokemon enthusiast as well, yeah. so I take that into consideration. That says a lot, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, it does. Yeah. Anyway, that is what we've been playing this week. And after a good sort of uh, 15 odd minutes of talking, let's get on. Yeah, with holy the, fuck. Let's with the actual the topics. Yeah, with the actual newscast bit of this show. We'll talk about some news. I uh what did I I had a tawny for my something something. I don't know, this is more um Pottermore. Pottermore? Yeah. I don't know. Don't know, man. Just saying. <laughs> <laughs> got a got a tawny owl. <laughs> Guess what? That is the start what? of the topic. <laughs> That's the intro <laughs> right there. <laughs> Sully has been introduced to Pottermore by one of his friends. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he is a Ravenclaw, apparently. I I think can't remember what I think that's I am. good. Uh yeah, it's perfectly fine. They're probably the least memorable of the houses. They do the least in, Just do the, in the series, thing. yeah. No, fair enough. I'd never heard of him, so. That's fair enough. Um I might, sign seen up. All of it. I might sign up to Pottermore with another email and uh, try and do the test. Anyway, um, so Harry Potter Hogwarts Mystery. Possibly the most disappointing mobile game ever because I wanted it to be good. You see, Kelsey and her friends, they love it. Really? They love it. But yeah. they're kind of like phone game noobs right? oh so, and they're the sort of yeah they kind of right. that shit up yeah they're the they're the whales oh <laughs> yeah. oh dear ah nothing um yeah that's ugh. um i really wanted this game to be good because the concept was really interesting and it looked really oh great that looks really fun and no it ended up being a game where you have to pay money or wait hours to stop a child from being strangled. For everything. Yeah. Oh, Jesus. I hope that's not actually the case. No, no, it is the case. <coughs> it oh. very much is the case because the amount okay. of... Uh, so they try to guilt trip you into paying to say... Pretty much because the amount of energy required to stop the child being strangled is more than your maximum capacity. I feel like that's fucked up. A little bit. That's some kind of weird manipulation guilt tripping. Yeah. A little bit. Huh. Anywho. Oh, dear. <laughs> have not played it, FYI. I have not. I'm not a big Harry Potter dude. I appreciate it. I like the universe. just hasn't ever quite sucked me in. It's kind of the same way I think some people feel about Star Wars. They, they're they just like, yeah, Star Wars. Yeah. Seen it. I'm cool. quite a Harry Potter fan. I, mm. I've read all the books. I've read all the movies. I'm not, not an obsessive fan of it. But I'm, I, you know, I'm quite a big fan of it. It's, it was, like, a big part of my childhood. Um, mm, that's fair. So that's probably one of the reasons this game was so annoying to me. <laughs> mm. But, yeah. They've now added some pets to the game. These pets include uh, rats. Oh, hello. It's, if, I, if you're going to let me scroll. So, like, companions, right? Yeah, companion like, like, like companions. Yep. Yeah, exactly. Oh, my God. What are you doing? Anyway, Just it's like added... my tawny owl. 
no, it's, it's, the page is completely no. fucked up for me. The web page for some reason. I've got to refresh that. Uh, I might that. slab it up. Uh, That's better. Anyway, I've the, got it. I got it. Yeah, the the uh, the pe- the game has added pets, including rats, toads, cats, and owls. And um, unfortunately, because this is a shit game, you can't acquire these these pets through normal progression of gameplay. Oh, you have to buy. You oh, have God. to buy them. Uh, so that they have their premium currency. Uh, which is called, which is gems, because you know that's that's what you associate with Harry Potter, isn't mm-hmm. it? Gems, definitely. Um, so basically, this these gems are the, it's, it's very much the currency that doesn't come quick enough through actual gameplay because it's the premium currency. Yeah. So you get like a dribble of it if you just play the game normally. Yeah, it's like me and bottle caps. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. It's the same as any other free to play game in that regard. And the the person we're looking at a Eurogamer article a bit, and the person who wrote this has played the game. He played the first in game year of the of the game and has 135 gems saved up, which is not enough to afford even the cheapest of the pets. The cheapest is 160. Mm-hmm. With a rat the, or the, rat. the rat and the toad, the cat is 215, and the owl is 320. And to be able to afford the owl, the total number of microtransactions that you would have to buy is a... Oh no, they do it by packs? Gem packs? They do it by packs, yeah. Cunts. Yeah. Uh, you have to buy a single 275 pack and two 25 packs to afford the owl, which is basically twelve pounds, give or take. Yep. That so is an P obscene amount of money. Damn, so it's a pound. It ninety nine P is rounds up to a pound, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so that's a pound for twenty five gems. Holy shit. So if you were to buy it by twenty five packs, damn. Yeah. I love the way you sort of you said that like you were questioning whether or not we used a decimal currency system. <laughs> <laughs> like, I think it would surprise me. Admittedly, until the I think it was the the seventies, we used a base sixteen currency because okay. reasons because imperial. Well, I was just double checking to not sound like a complete retard, but just ended up <laughs> sounding like a complete retard. No, anyway. we. No, I mean, uh, until the 70s, we used base 16. That was what, uh, okay. like, shillings and halfpennies and yeah, all yeah, that yeah. kinds of stuff and all that bollocks. It doesn't make any sense in, you know, our world. I mean, you guys aren't anywhere near as bad as those yanks, so. Not many people are at the moment. <laughs> yeah, you know, a lot of my other categories, yes. Yeah. Dude, their, their change is just disgraceful. Just get rid of it. Don't need all of it. I know. <laughs> you don't need a $1 note. I don't. Th- I, no. I think that's unnecessary. Very, no, no, no that. mm, see, I disagree. Very handy, I think. No, I prefer a coin for a for a single a coin? unit yeah, okay. of currency. I think. You see, I only good. found it. I think if you live there, it'd be different. But I found them very handy because um, for tipping purposes, uh, um, yeah, just that's having true. a lot of small, compact change is very handy. And that's when you're true. holidaying, it's very handy. Yeah, I, the one I dislike the most in America is the dime because it's ridiculously tiny for no reason. Oh yeah. It's just yeah. like, hey, here's this a... tiny coin for nothing. In our, in our hostel, we had a communal pile of change where we just all dumped it there. People we didn't even know, might we were just like, just fucking help yourselves. Yeah. You know, dump it there, take whatever you want, because <laughs> we just couldn't carry it all around. No, exactly. Have you, has, uh, has Australia got rid of its pennies? Yeah. I yeah, thought We've so, got yeah. only got um, five cent piece, 10 cent piece, 20 cent piece, 50 cent piece, dollar, $2. And then it's the five dollar note, ten dollar note, twenty dollar note, fifty dollar note, and hundred dollar note. Yeah, so it's so pretty it's, straightforward. It's the same as ours, except we've still got our pennies and two pennies. Yeah, yeah. Even though we really need to get rid of them because they're fucking worth. Oh yeah, just just round it up, round up, round down. Done. Yeah, you know, it's not, it doesn't really make much difference in the long run. They're just in the way, no. and they cost more to manufacture than they're worth. So what's the point? Yep, absolutely. Anyway. Weird money-based uh, opinions aside, 
This no, is an obscene playable, amount of money to pay for a fucking pet in Hogwarts Mystery. There's no... It really is. There's no so, excuse for it. For uh, curiosity purposes, to get another perspective, I just linked Kelsey the same article. And I just questioned... She gave me a sh- surprise face. And I just... she I'm like, do you like? Question mark. And she says, it's cool that you can get pets. <laughs> no! <laughs> I'm going to ask him, like, you going to buy? Oh, no. We'll keep you, I'll keep you guys updated to see if they've <laughs> captured the... Uh, the, the whales. Oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Christ. Okay. Anyway. Right, so they're not even just a cosmetic thing. They're, they they actually have an in-game purpose. Okay. Uh, so apparently she's got enough gems to buy anyway. That's oh, nice. well, that's all right. Uh, sleeping pets give you a drip feed of energy, uh, which is, the, the, that's the thing that lets you do things in the game. Uh, but that's it. That's that's all the pets do. They give you energy, but apart from that, uh, that that's that's literally it. Hmm. So fuck all. Just wait a flip. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, great, great. Why? Why would you spend twelve pounds for that? <laughs> Some people would, man. It's like. Just the, the little things in life. The, the problem is, <laughs> it's not even £12 to let you play the game indefinitely. It's £12 to let you play the game a little bit more frequently than you do. Hmm. That's not a good deal, I'm going to be honest. No, it's not. It's <laughs> not. But we, we know the people that are going to buy these. Like, yeah. We know them. This yeah, is the hardcore themselves. Harry Potter fans who will literally just they absorb... Won't Everything that it comes out with. Money will not be a factor. No, exactly. <sighs> and then, it, then it, of course, you've got the uh, impressionable <coughs> children who just download mobile games oh. and play them. On yeah, Daddy's I went card. there. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Fortnite. Ah, oh, fuck it. it. Have you seen some of those articles? We did. Uh, yeah, some of them. Yeah. We, talked about, um, we talked about them in a newscast episode a while ago. Yeah, listen to that one. Fuck me. <laughs> it's <coughs> painful. It's kind of ludicrous, isn't it? Ludicrous. Oh, it really is. Speaking of, oh. by the way, um, this episode, as well as a load of other newscast episodes, are available on SoundCloud and an audio form yes. if you want to watch so the or listen editions. to it like that. Yes, and Pocket Editions. And, and hopefully... soon to be available on iTunes. Yes. I'm going to sort that out tomorrow for us, actually. So. Uh, could you try and get us on Google Podcasts as well? Oh, yeah. Okay. Because yeah. that would be more useful for our Android phone users, like mm-hmm. myself. Can do. So, Noted. yes. There we go. Coming soon to actual podcast formats near you. <laughs> the Gamecast, mm-hmm. Newscast, and Pocket Edition. You'll actually be able to take Pocket Edition on the go, like how, yes. exactly how we pitch it. <laughs> you can listen to the newscast on oh. the go, which is a much better use of your phone than playing Harry Potter Hogwarts Mystery. Don't buy it. Don't play it. Don't buy the pets. Don't buy the microtransactions. Let's move on. Kelsey just bought the cat. Fuck's sake! <laughs> God damn it. Okay, let's move on. Let's move on. Let's go. So Atari are pieces of shit, aren't they? <clears throat> well, got to got to do at least one of those per y- episode. <laughs> yet to be, uh, yet to be uh, bona fide. Potentially pieces of shit. Um, yeah, it's interesting. The whole Atari VCS thing is very, very, very interesting. Um, I mean, not only that, but the the history of Atari in recent times is interesting. You know how that company kind of fell and was kind of acquired by multiple different. Um, I think it was like studios or publishers. I don't know. I haven't gone through the history in detail, but eventually acquired by someone and then they adopted the name. And now they're coming out with the Atari VCS. Um, you know, they had the Indiegogo, which is extremely successful. And then it was the day of, sorry, the day before launching the system, they pulled it. They delayed it. They aborted the launch. Um, and I think, um, God, what's his name? Count, I've already forgotten. Kieran McCarthy. McCarthy. Kieran Kieran McCarthy, a tech journalist. Um, I believe this was at 
GDC. I could be wrong on that. Um, attended GDC and he actually had uh, I think it might be that because it wasn't long ago. Yeah, he had face-to-face time. I believe it was with the CCO. So not CEO, the CCO. Um, someone who was meant to have intimate knowledge of the hardware. Um, and basically, he it was a stock standard interview. He was getting hands-on time with the Atari console. Um, they had it in um, not final form. I believe physically it was in final form. It wasn't necessarily operational. This isn't um, even my final form. It, exactly. Um, but the whole uh, interview kind of went a bit um, iffy and cuey. Um, the dude he was interviewing seemed to have very little knowledge. He was very evasive with his questions. Um, very, very strange stuff. Um, he was questioned about why the console uh, was not released on its original uh, launch date. You know, what was the reasoning behind that? The dude dodged all the questions. Um, <laughs> okay, there's professional dodging of questions, right? You know, you look at your Phil Spencer, handles yeah. it with style. Um, there's professional dodging, things that they just know they can't talk about and they don't. But the way this guy did it, <laughs> it was like a child. Um, he did not have a shred of professionality, pro- sorry, professionality, professionalism about him. Um, it was very, 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 a very strange interview. Um, basically, anyway, so long story short, um, he wrote up a piece saying that he kind of, you know, putting basically a word of caution out. Um, stating that, you know, this was a very funky interview. He went through all the ins and outs in the interview. He actually had the audio. He recorded them with their permission. He recorded the interview. <laughs> um, so, he has that to fall back on. Um, but Atari pretty much put out a tweet, which hopefully Count can put up on screen for you guys. Um, basically, just saying they have, oh, we have no idea what the journalist is talking about. You know, he came in, you know, blah, 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 blah. And they basically just kind of tried to smudge him a little bit. Um but, you know, luckily, Kieran McCarthy responded, you know, hey, 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 here's the audio, go listen for yourself. And I went and actually had to listen for myself, and it is fucking weird. Um, he had every right to throw them under the bus. Um, with Well, not, he didn't really throw them under the bus. He presented the facts, and Atari arced up. Um, he, and he gave his opinion. You know, it seems very iffy. Um, for example, <laughs> you know, they're meant to be launching this system that's going to have not only the entire back catalogue of Atari, Atari games, um, but it's going to be a games console that's capable of playing other games as well. And, you know, you'd think, okay, well, great. So, you have people developing games for you, right? Your, your system's launching within a year. Um, fantastic. But they're still settling on hardware. They, they might be changing the chipset in the console. They're like, are you serious? Like, so who's developing games for you if you have moving hardware? You know, like that's the PS4, the PS3, the Xbox 360, the Xbox One. They settle on their hardware years in advance so that people can start developing software for the system ready to go at launch. You know, so basically, in my opinion and um, Kieran McCarthy's opinion is that it's a shambles. They have no idea what they're doing. So, I don't know. It's crazy. Yeah. Well, do you think... This might be some real indication of Atari's faith in what they're making, or lack of I faith. Don't, <laughs> I don't even think it's that, man. I think I don't think you can look at these guys as being Atari. This is someone that acquired. Well, the, yeah, I mean, Atari's not been Atari since the nineties. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. You know, we're not looking at a Microsoft or even a Sega here. This is some, you know, these amateur league. It's amateur league hour. They've oh, yeah. acquired the brand and are selling something out of the brand. They've made a sexy looking piece of kit, but it's apparently seemingly all they've actually created. Um, and I urge you, um, hopefully, Count, we can link the article, Kieran McCarthy's article, um, with the actual audio recording of this interview down below. And you you guys will understand 100% where I'm coming from with this. It's just ugh, amateur league stuff. Like you and I could have pitched a better product and had more coherent answers for his questions, even if it was bullshitting. Um, it just sounds like a lot of bullshitting. And to put it in perspective even more, um, the same um, Atari was associated with another product launch, a smartwatch that never launched. They just took people's money. Yeah. So it's sounding very... It's. I'm sure it's going to come to market, but... Whether it's you know, they've what taken over, promised. <laughs> yeah, they've taken over $3 million in Indigo, on Indiegogo. Um, exactly. Like, when is this thing going to come? When That's is it going to come? You know? And 
what are they doing with it that's costing $3 million? Who knows? I mean, it would have been cool if it was just a sexy Atari reimagining console. Yeah, even if it was just like the SNES Mini kind of thing. With just like, hey, these are all the best games from Atari's old times. Yep. No, they wanted to take it a step further, which is fine, but it seemingly amateurs are doing it. Well, yeah. <laughs> so if you want to take it a step further, why don't you? Why don't you try and help yourselves by telling us what you're doing with it? Yeah, and not only that, all their response to criticism has been kind of disgusting as well. They don't conduct themselves very well in the public face. Um, you know, their attack on Kieran. Um, it's just very unprofessional, everything they do. It really does seem like amateur league. Um, you need to go listen to the audio. It's going to put it into perspective. I'm not going to say any more on it. You just listen to the audio and make your own mind up. It's just, you know, I think we're going to get the console, but in what, when or in what form, I don't know. Um, I'm guessing we're just going to probably get a box that delivers all of the Atari games via emulation, and it's going to be powerful enough to run other um other games from other publishers um you know it does run linux but i'm assuming those games will never ever 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 come it's just going to be a console that's going to pay the play the back catalog of atari and that's all it's ever going to be and it's going to be a very expensive way to do that yeah i i can't imagine people actually wanting to develop something for this no well they can't be because the hardware's still not finalized it's still moving and it's launching apparently in less than a year and we, we know next to nothing about it still. I remember covering no. this on the newscast when they announced it. I was like, oh, this is, like, cool. They've not told us a lot about it, but it, lo- it looks like it could be something interesting. And we that was months ago. Yeah. Um, I mean, just to put something else into perspective again, just a little snippet from the interview. The, the CCO, I've forgotten his name now, was asked... It was the retro controller, right? They had the product. Yeah, that, yeah. And he's USB C. Like, he had it there, and Kieran will asked him, plug "What happened if I plug it? Will it work if we plug it in?" And he said, "I don't know." <laughs> I, I, it's just like I, I, I don't know. Like I just don't know how it interacts with other hardware. I'm like, but it's USB C. What happens if you plug it into a fucking PC? Is it going to detect it? He couldn't even answer that. Well, he couldn't even um, like. And then he got asked, "Oh, is it custom hardware, or is it is it like a custom thing that will only work with it?" And then he still said, "I don't know about that." Yeah, you and should there was know. Other things. You're going into exactly. an interview about it as well. Like even you if you have didn't know intimate beforehand, knowledge. you ask. You should have intimate knowledge on your product. Yeah. Um, uh, to put it in perspective again, he was asked about the why it was pulled. The launch was delayed, um, and he like kind of fumbled around for a bit. And he ended with, "Well, if I told you, I'd have to kill you." I'm like, "Wow." So super, super professional. You don't have a reason, so you're just gonna make a stupid joke. Just tell the fucking truth. How bad yeah. could it be? We weren't ready. It wasn't done. We fell behind. There was delays. You know, I Be mean... transparent. You know, delays happen. That's yeah. fine. Just say it. You know, just... I mean, the the, the best thing you can ever say with, when you have when you have something delayed... I for, This is for my... You know, for, in my opinion, is that we're just trying to make the best thing that we can make. Which is, you know, that's yeah. the best thing you can say because it's like, okay, mm-hmm. they actually care. So it's the and same we weren't thing. ready to launch it. It wasn't there. Exactly. It's like where Grand Theft Auto V's PC release got delayed so many times. And the reason they kept mm-hmm. saying is, we just want to be able to launch the best product we can. And, you know, yeah. that, that satisfied me. It's I was like, oh, yeah, it's okay, honest. great, cool. I know that you yep. want to launch a game that's actually playable and not a buggy mess on PC. And they did. And that's great. Mm-hmm. But, you know, I don't know, man. I think it's all just blown up so much, so much more than maybe they initially thought they would. And they got so much more money and they're just kind of going, well, we had this, we had this idea in mind and now they just keep shifting the goalposts. I know. That's the pro- bigger the, and better. It's the problem when a Kickstarter becomes so successful and they, they end up with so much more money than they thought they needed instead mm. of just going, well, well, we could just use this to manufacture more things. They, I think a lot of companies that they go, well, what else could we do? We have to do something more. I was like, we, you don't yeah. have to do anything That's more. You just do what exactly. you promised in the Kickstarter. Yeah. And then yep. just use that extra money. Maybe like, throw in some freebies with the console or something. Yeah, throw in a couple of freebies with it. Or, you know, just put that money into manufacturing costs and manufacture yeah. more of the units. 
you know. Yeah, or do a second one or something. Um, it's Yeah, I've got a feeling that's just the case. Like, they are probably amateurs with a bad PR team. Um, apparently, a lot of guys, a lot of them aren't in sync with each other and what's actually happening. They don't have intimate knowledge of the hardware. And I, I think it is, it's just blown up and the, the lines are moving. Um, they're, they're trying to deliver something bigger and better. Um, but, you know, I'm pretty confident we will get it, but it's just going to be an expensive emulation box. Oh, yeah. It's, it's not going to be anywhere near worth the hype. So, yeah, you know, a lesson then. If you're going to try and discredit a journalist, make sure you try and do it with someone who hasn't recorded your conversation. Well, I mean, don't even do it. Save some face. Come out and be like, look, we're really sorry you feel this way. Um, Can we get you back in to have some hands on time to give you some more clarity on what we're trying to do? Sit him down with somebody else who does actually have intimate knowledge of the hardware. Try win him back over. Don't just discredit him for presenting, you know, the recording and his opinion. Mm. Like, it's just they've handled it very poorly. The thing is, and seemingly this happens a lot in the game. There's a journalist called uh, Laura Kate Dale. She's worked in a lot of places. I think she currently works for Polygon. Mm. It's like, oh no, is it Kotaku? I can't remember. She's a, she's a good journalist anyway. Um, she. He's very well known. Yes, it's Kotaku at the moment. She's very well known for being... She has a very good inside source, particularly for Nintendo stuff. And she's done a lot of sort of exclusive breaking news stories on Nintendo. Mm. And she has been frequently batted down by the company and going, no, that's not true. That's rubbish. That's rubbish. And then turns out later on down the line, oh, she was right. Con- wow. Like this is this isn't even just like yeah. fluke thing. This is consistent behavior. Yeah, uh, yeah. So you know, it's not exclusive to this instance. <sighs> that this has happened, but you know. Yeah, it's just unfortunate. I mean, I was I was really excited. Like, I get really excited by all this kind of blast from the past retake on these old consoles with the mini Nintendos and stuff. Like, it's just a nice thing to see. Kind of makes you just feel nice that you're kind of getting this nice piece of nostalgic plastic you know with hdmi you know all of your games have been you know upscaled or whatever you know you're bringing back a nice piece of the past and i was really excited to see that for atari like it is a it you know it's kind of almost the birthplace of gaming in a way the atari yeah Um, certainly the birthplace of home gaming yeah and to see it being handled by seemingly amateurs is disappointing i feel like atari itself what it was deserves better than this yeah, definitely. But, you know, Atari hasn't been Atari for many years. No, and quite no. frankly, I have no particular interest in this thing anymore as an entity. So, mm. fuck it, frankly. <laughs> yeah, fuck it. I agree. Anyway. I can bin that shit. Exactly. Let's move on to what will be a very quick final news story. Right. We don't actually have much more information on this news story other than what I'm about to say. PUBG Corp filed a lawsuit in January against Epic Games for supposed copyright infringement. That case has now been dropped mysteriously. That Mm. is all we know. (laughs) Now, I think Mark actually shed some thoughts on this in his last newscast um, as to why... uh, Not newscast, sorry, his last GC Informer. So, news video. So, go check that out. Um... I think he came to a conclusion of that. I think PUBG and Fortnite share a similar parent company or something like that. Yeah, partly. Um, it's not gonna. Yeah, so wouldn't it look very good, would it? <laughs> no, it would be considered some kind of. He thought it some kind of weird infighting, which completely makes sense. Yeah. Um, I mean, besides the fact that you're suing, um, suing them for a, a game mode that everybody else is currently yeah, replicating I mean- as well. What you're going to sue one but not fucking Call of Duty? That's what. That's where I think this all falls down. As like I, I can't remember specifically, but I remember after the fact there were actually a couple of decent arguments in this to this copyright case. Mm. I can't remember what they okay. were specifically, but I remember there being. I'm sure there are. Out of all of it, you know, out of all the shit arguments in it, there was one or two decent ones. But yeah. yeah to to be able to 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 sue one thing for doing and not the rest of them is just you know 
Well, wouldn't it have been wiser to, I mean, I don't know how it all works, but to trademark your intellectual property? Uh, no, because half of the... Is it considered too broad, like the, the idea? The problem is, is and it, one, it is very broad. Two, I think Battle Royale as a thing is already trademarked by the film Battle Royale. Oh, wow. Well, I mean, like, the, the game mode in essence, though, is that could you That's do that? That's too broad a term. It's very, it's like it when the Fine okay. Brothers tried to <clears throat> trademark reaction videos. That's too well, that's, broad that's, a thing. That's what I figured. So if it's too broad to trademark, why the fuck do you think you can sue somebody? Uh, copyright is different to trademark. Mm. Trademark. So copyright is basically the stealing of actual assets i remember what the good property, argument yeah. was apparently fortnite okay. has used or a, 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 allegedly fortnite had used some code that was part of PUBG when they made their battle royale mode for fortnite ah, that's the okay, only well, that's decent argument that was in this right. so that's well, that's, that's copyright fair. when they're using things that yeah, actually was a trademark would apply to. to the idea a trademark is basically yeah, it's it's the trademark is I own this idea. You can't make anything that will mm. confuse mm. people. So you go mm -hmm. if you can mistake one thing for the other, then that's sort of trademark infringement. But if you're actually ripping something off and you know just taking a thing and putting it in your game, then that's copyright. Yeah. So yeah, there I is, mean, there, I, there is a legal distinction, but yeah. Yeah. No, that's fair. I mean, cats out of the bag, guys. Battle Royale's everywhere. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, you know, to, to, to target just one company would be It was just weird. Ridiculous. Like, do you think that's what it started with? Like, maybe they did suspect that they, they saw something in the code that they're like, hey, that that. I that think it might ours. be. And then they they, uh, what I think it was, they probably saw that one thing and then they thought, well, maybe that's not enough evidence. So they contrived a load of other bullshit evidence. Which when made just whatever Fortnite case they had G. look yeah. even more flimsy. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, I mean, that's fair, but it's going to happen. Like, obviously, they were only doing it because they don't want competition, but it's already too late now anyway, which is why I'm guessing why they've dropped it all, because every man and their dog, I mean, fuck, even probably Halo's going to have a battle royale in a couple of years. <laughs> you so. don't sound thrilled. No, I'm actually pretty keen. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> I'm just saying it's everywhere. It's too late. It you is, know, you know. About it. PUBG is still like it's got a very dedicated audience, but mm. Fortnite's the one that's captured the mainstream, the... the public's imagination, as it were. Well, PUBG captured. It took all of the PC realm, right? It just oh, got yeah. rid of it up. The, like, all this... the shooter PC realm, blah blah blah. Just took it. But yeah, and then Fortnite... Fortnite's just the general mass consumer version. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'd, I'd agree with that. But yeah, you know, this lawsuit didn't have a lot to go on, I think, no. in the first place. So I, I think it's definitely the right decision to have... It's, it's not been dropped, by the way, it's been closed. So there's been an out-of-court settlement ag agreed. Mm -hmm. But we well, obviously, we're never going to know what that settlement was. But I, I suspect we'll probably hear nothing further from it, I guess. Yeah, I think uh, this will, uh, this whole thing will just sort of just vanish into the ether. <laughs> I mean, I just found it more fascinating that PUBG was suing Fortnite. You know, Epic Games being the owner of Fortnite and also the owner of the same engine that PUBG was using. I just find yeah, it there is amazing. also that. That's sort of like oh, it's well, kind of funny, you know, isn't it? Yeah, it's what kind leg of... do they have to stand on if they don't want them to use their engine? Like, could they do that? I don't know. Yeah, they but could. It's interesting. You know, it's playing the, with fire. The way though. these things, the way these kinds of licenses work, there is revoke your right to use. Yeah, the yeah exactly. You can. They Maybe can have their license dropped. revoked. Maybe, Maybe. Like, hey, you want to play like that? Well, fuck you. We'll take the engine back. Obviously, we don't know that. God, <laughs> it'd be so good to be a fly on the wall of that closing, wouldn't it? Oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> Still, love uh, good drama. Yeah. It definitely do. However, we'll likely never know why that happened. But, you know, good. Because I don't think... I think to actually have that lawsuit go through to some sort of conclusion would have 
It'll start a lot of other stuff, won't it? It would have been detrimental, I think, to mm. the the gaming world as a whole if we're going if if we're actually being able to copyright game modes. Yeah, people That's... would be so afraid to iterate on previous ideas, exactly. to infringing on rights, and exactly. it's going to get stagnant real quick. That is exactly hey, my Hey, Uncharted's thoughts. too similar to Last of Us. I know it's the same developer, but just for example. Or Tomb Raider's too similar to Uncharted. Mm. Could you imagine? Yeah, that's, that's, just... where I, that's where it sort of loses me. I'm just like, well, is it? Hmm. You know. Where does it stop? Because yeah, shooters are very similar. I know a slippery slope argument's not the best in the world, but it's, you know. No. Still. Mm. <laughs> anyway. That, I think, is a uh, good place to wrap this up. The The lawsuit's over. We don't have to worry about it anymore. But I still don't think it should have happened in the first place. Absolutely. I agree. Indeed. And let us uh, wrap up the show. Make sure then. you go get your pets. Um, check out the, yeah, the audio from that interview. Yeah, don't Very do interesting that. shit. Don't, don't get your pets. <laughs> no, check out the audio, though, from the... Uh, yeah, do that. I'll, I'll try and remember to look Kieran it. Kieran McCarthy. Yeah, yeah exactly. It's very interesting stuff. Indeed. Anyway, thank you very much for watching this episode of the uh, Gamecast Newscast, and I hope you all enjoyed it. If you did, like, subscribe, share, follow us on whatever podcast platform you may be listening to this on. And I uh, hope you enjoyed it. And thank you very much, Sully, for joining me. Anytime. And hopefully Max will be back next week. Uh, oh, no, wait, he won't be back next week. I'll have to get someone else on for next week. But hopefully he'll be back soon. <laughs> so, you know, he's had, he's had a very busy few weeks. He's had E3. Mm. He's had to catch up on a load of work. And now he's moving. So, you know, that's fair what enough. Break. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. And remember, please check out the Pocket Edition I had him on. Please, yes, uh, check was... out the Pocket Edition. I'm looking forward to that. Check out... We will post that everywhere. Twitter, Discord. If you're not on a Discord, make sure you get into our Discord. Yeah. Check out a lot of things. We're doing a new show soon, hopefully, where we're going to be doing sort of funny things with patch notes. I'm going to try and flesh mm -hmm. out that. We're going to be recording that in about 18 hours, give or take. Mm -hmm. Actually, no, not that long. 12 hours, roughly. At the latest. Oh, God. Don't say it like that. <laughs> we'll be recording that at some point, and I'm going to have to try and flesh out that concept today. So, otherwise, yes, or check out Creative Corner, because I've got a new one of those coming out today as we're oh, recording. No. Hooray! This one is Planet Coaster themed, if I am correct. Oh, I like those ones. I like the Planet Coaster ones, because I really love playing Planet Coaster, and any excuse to play is, uh, is good by me. Uh, I can tell you. Oh no, I do apologise. It's Minecraft. I'm returning to Minecraft. Ooh. Where I am making an underground throne room. A sort of... <gasps> that was my idea. It was your idea. It's <laughs> a very... Yeah, it's making the sort of beginner's like evil that done layer. In, what, half an hour? Took me an hour, roughly. And I Dang. got the video down to 15 minutes. Nice, very nice. I'm going to check that out. Yes. Anyway, thank you all very much for watching, and we'll see you next time. Cheerio. Toodles.